Good morning, everybody. <laughs> this could be interesting, but um, I thought in the spirit of Mark Ernji, though Mark is not with us, <laughs> we would hear um, from the Anglican formularies, really, uh, a sermon that was meant to bring unity to our doctrine, uh, a sermon that was meant to inform churches all over the place during the Reformation and beyond to unite us together in common doctrine. And so today, I'm actually going to be preaching on disunity and um, contention and brawling, which is the 12th homily in the first book of homilies. Listen as we begin to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, what Paul says in verse 10. I appeal to you, brothers, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree and that there be no divisions among you, but that you may be united in the same mind and the same judgment. For it's been reported to me by Chloe's people that there is quarreling among you, my brothers. What I mean is that each one of you says, I follow Paul, or I follow Apollos, or I follow Cephas, or I follow Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you except for Crispus and Gaius, so that no one may say that you were baptized in my name. I did not baptize also, I did baptize also the household of Stephanus. Beyond that, I do not know whether I baptized anyone else. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, and not with words of eloquent wisdom, lest the cross of Christ be emptied of its power. Please pray with me. Our Father, we do pray that you would help us to hear from you this morning, even words that were written so long ago. First and foremost, the words of Scripture to us, but then those brothers that went before us hundreds of years ago to bring reform to the church and to see uh, your people established in true doctrine. We pray, though these words may seem foreign to us, distant from us, that they would have good effect on our lives nonetheless, that you would be growing us up in Christ, making us more like him and uniting us in him, our head. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. A sermon against contention and brawling. Please just keep an open mind, all right, and listen attentively as you're able. I'll give you my own pastoral prophetic reflections at the end of it. And I'm only reading part one. This day, good Christian people, shall be declared unto you the unprofitableness and shameful unhonesty of contention, strife, and debate. To the intent that when you shall see, as it were in a table painted before your eyes, the evil flavoredness and deformity of this most detestable vice, your stomachs may be moved to rise against it and to detest and abhor that sin which is so much to be hated and so pernicious and hurtful to all men. But among all kinds of contention, none is more hurtful than is contention in matters of religion. Eschew, say St. Paul, foolish and unlearned questions, knowing that they breed strife. It becometh not the servant of God to fight or strive, but to be meek toward all men. This contention and strife was in St. Paul's time among the Corinthians, and is at this time among us Englishmen and Australians. For too many there be which, upon the ale benches or other places, delight to set forth certain questions not so much pertaining to edification as to vainglory, and showing forth of their cunning, and so unsoberably to reason and dispute that when the, neither party will give place to the other, they fall to chiding and contention, and sometime from hot words to further inconvenience. St. Paul could not abide to hear among the Corinthians these words of discord or dissension, I hold of Paul, I of Cephas, and I of Apollo. What would he then say if he heard these words of contention, which be now almost in every man's mouth? 
He is a Pharisee. He is a gospeler. He is of the new sort. He's of the old faith. He is a new broached brother. He is a good Catholic father. He's a papist. He is a heretic. Oh, how the church is divided. Oh, how the cities be cut and mangled. Oh, how the coat of Christ that was without seam is all to rent and torn. Oh, body mystical of Christ. Where is that holy and happy unity out of, which, out of the which whosoever is, he is not in Christ? If one member be pulled from another, where is the body? If the body be drawn from the head, where is the life of the body? We cannot be jointed to Christ our head, except we be glued with concord and charity to one another. For he that is not in this unity is not of the church of Christ, which is a congregation or unity together and not a division. St. Paul saith that as long as emulation or envying, contention and factions be among us, we be carnal and walk according to the fleshly man. And St. James saith, if you have bitter envying, and contention in your hearts, glory not of it. For whereas contention is, there is unsteadfastness in all evil deeds. And why do we not hear St. Paul, which prayeth us, whereas he might command us, saying, I beseech you, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that you will speak all one thing, and that there be no dissension among you, but that you will be one whole body, of one mind and of one opinion in the truth. If his, desirable, if his desire be reasonable and honest, why do we not grant it? If his request be for our profit, why do we refuse it? And if we listen not to hear his petition or prayer, yet let us hear his exhortation where he saith, I exhort you that you Walk as it becometh the vocation in which you be called, with all submission and meekness, with lenity and softness of mind, bearing one another by charity, studying to keep the unity of the Spirit by the bond of peace, for there is one body, one Spirit, one faith, one baptism. There is, he saith, but one body, and of which he can be no lively member, that is at variance with other members. There's one spirit which joineth and knitteth all things in one. And how can this one spirit reign in us when we among ourselves be divided? There is but one faith. And how can we then say he is of the old faith and he is of the new faith? There is but one baptism. And then shall not all they which be baptized be one? Contention causeth division, wherefore it ought not to be among Christians, whom one faith and baptism joineth in unity. But if we contemn St. Paul's request and exhortation, yet at the least let us regard his earnest entreating, in which he doth very earnestly charge us, and as I may so speak, conjure us in this form and manner. If there be any consideration of Christ if there be any comfort in love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if you have any bowels and pity of, and compassion, fulfill my joy being all like affected, having one charity, being of one mind, of one opinion, that nothing be done by contention or vainglory. Who is he that hath any bowels of pity that will not be moved with these words so pithy? Whose heart is so stony that the sword of these words, which be more sharp than any two-edged sword, may not cut and break asunder. Wherefore, let us endeavor ourselves to fulfill St. Paul's joy here in this place, which shall be at length to our great joy in another place. Let us so read the Scripture, that by reading thereof we may be made the better livers, livers rather than the more contentious disputers, 
If anything is necessary to be taught, reason or disputed, let us do it with all meekness, softness, and lenity. If anything shall chance to be spoken uncomely, let one bear another's frailty. He that is faulty, let him rather amend than defend that which he hath spoken amiss, lest he fall by contention from a foolish error into an obstinate heresy. For it is better to give place meekly than to win the victory with the breach of charity, which chanceth where every man will defend his opinion obstinately. If we be Christian men, if we be Christian men, why do we not follow Christ, which saith, Learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. A disciple must learn the lesson of his schoolmaster, and a servant must obey the commandment of his master. He that is wise and learned, said St. James, let him show his goodness by his good conversation and soberness of his wisdom. For where there is envy and contention, that wisdom cometh not from God, but is worldly wisdom, man's wisdom, and devilish wisdom. For the wisdom that cometh from above, from the Spirit of God, is chaste and pure, corrupted with no evil affections. It's quiet, meek, and peaceable, abhorring all desire of contention. It's tractable, obedient, not grudging to learn and to give place to them that teach better for their reformation. For there shall never be an end of striving and contention if we contend, who in contention shall be master and have the overhand. We shall heap error upon error if we continue to defend that obstinately which was spoken unadvisedly. For truth It is in that stiffness in maintaining an opinion breedeth contention, brawling and chiding, which is a vice among all other most pernicious and pestilent to common peace and quietness. And as it standeth betwixt two persons and parties, for no man doth commonly chide with himself, so it comprehendeth two most detestable vices, The one is picking of quarrels with sharp and contentious words. The other stand in forward answering and multiplying evil words again. The first is so abominable that St. Paul saith, if any that is called a brother be a worshiper of idols, a brawler or picker of quarrels, a thief or an extortioner with him, that is such a man, see that ye eat not. Now here, consider that St. Paul numbereth a scolder, a brawler, or a picker of quarrels among thieves and idolaters. And many times cometh less hurt of a thief than of a railing tongue. For the one taketh away a man's good name, the other taketh but his riches, which is of much less value and estimation than is his good name. And a thief hurteth but him from whom he stealeth, but he that hath an evil tongue troubleth all the town where he dwelleth, and sometimes the whole country. And a railing tongue is a pestilence full of contagiousness that St. Paul willeth Christian men to forbear the company of such, neither to eat nor to drink with them. And whereas he will not that a Christian woman should forsake her husband, although he be an infidel, nor that a Christian servant should depart from his master company with an infidel, yet he forbiddeth, sorry, which is an infidel and heathen, and so suffereth a Christian man to keep company with an infidel, yet he forbiddeth us to eat and drink with a scolder or a quarrel picker. And also in the sixth chapter of the Corinthians, he saith thus, Be not deceived, for neither fornicators neither worshippers of idols, neither thieves nor drunkards, neither cursed speakers shall dwell in the kingdom of heaven. It must needs be a great fault that doth move and cause the father to disinherit his natural son. And how can it otherwise be that this cursed speaking must needs be a most damnable sin, the which doth cause God, our most merciful and loving father, 
to deprive us of his most blessed kingdom of heaven. Against the other sin that standeth in requiting taunt for taunt, speaketh Christ himself. I say unto you, saith our Savior Christ, resist not evil, but love your enemies, and say well by them that say evil by you. Do well unto them that do evil to you, and pray for them that do hurt and persecute you, that you may be the children of your Father which is in heaven, who suffereth his Son to rise both upon the good and evil, and sendeth this rain upon to the just and the unjust." To this doctrine of Christ agreeth very well the teaching of St. Paul, that chosen vessel of God, who ceaseth not to exhort and call upon us, saying, Bless them that curse you. Bless, I say, and curse not. Recompense to no man evil for evil, if it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably among all men." That's the end of the first section of the homily on contention and brawling. And can I just say to you, as foreign as those words are, as difficult as they may have been to follow for you, I hope that the gist got across. That it is unbecoming of us as brothers in Christ to pick quarrels, to try and contend with one another in a way in which we seek a place over against the other. There is no place for us over against one another. There is only a place for us beside one another under Christ our head. And we are bound together by one faith, one Lord, one baptism, one spirit dwelling in all of us. And it will betray a lack of gospel confidence in us if we seek to find place in community here or wherever else we go by one-upsmanship, by party alliance, by affiliation of anything other than the grace of God in Christ. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for these old words that speak ever true. Help us, Lord, not to contend with one another, not to brawl as if that were virtuous. It is instead a terrible vice, a terrible vice that is brought about by our pride and, in fact, our gospel insecurity. Forgive us, Lord, for the times that we bite and devour one another. Help us, Lord, instead to stand in one faith, one love, one baptism under our one Lord Jesus Christ and in the bond of your Holy Spirit. Help us, instead of dismantling each other, deconstructing every minute detail, instead to be concerned with edification in truth as we speak the truth in love. Help us in this, we pray, please, Lord, as we wish to be growing up in Christ our head. Amen.